everyone, this is Ranger Rob, and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Channel. And uh, it's a smoky day in Central Oregon. Wow. So, uh, Sherry, poor Sherry had to go back to work this week. Kind of a bummer. And uh, just noticing one of my uh, cherry <laughs> tomato plants is uh, starting to make a a little cherry tomatoes a uh, yum so you know the routine guys we gotta go check the uh, garden in the back see what kind of uh maintenance it might need and uh we'll take it from there wow guys i've been walking around here a little bit super smoky today uh wasn't aware we we're gonna get so much smoke i'm not sure what fire it's coming from but, uh, man, it's hard to even stay out here too long. So I uh, checked most of the systems. Uh, I do add, have to add water to a couple of tanks, but uh, I can wait till later on in the day. But, uh, yeah, super smoky. <laughs> well, guys, it's still smoky outside here. Been about an hour later. And uh, I think I kind of want to wrap up my... Uh, my week with having sherry home and stuff and then of course in the last seven days last week or so i got a good wind going here um a lot of stuff's been going on you know we uh things overseas and uh i think i'm seeing actually a lot of the homesteaders are actually sending out the same message and that's uh the reality of the fact that we need to be more self-sufficient. If you haven't noticed, especially what's going on overseas, that uh, no one's there to save you. Um, the only person that's there to save you, that's going to be there, is you. Your family, your community, the people that you are hold close to your heart and uh, if you haven't gotten that reality in the last two weeks um, just by hearing what's going on then I don't know what to tell you but the fact is is you could be abandoned you could be uh, all on your own uh, the food could go away the power could go away and if you've not taken care of yourself been more self-sufficient realize that there's no government's going to come in and save us if we get into that situation you have only one person or one family to uh, rely on and that's you and your your spouse or partners and uh I hope you've noticed in the last week or so when you're watching our show, every day we add on a little more to uh, being more self-sufficient. Uh, yesterday you saw me uh, demo a, a, a small generator, which was to me I'm very excited about. Why? Because I know um, that if power went out in the winter and it gets pretty cold here uh we'll be warm and cozy i also know last year when i bought the other generator that this is my well house i will have water and uh because i now have a backup generator to run my water system <clears throat> now the third thing i want to do for power is put a 50 amp plug in the side of this house do a master back um, um, master switch where if I lose my power I can put a 50 amp generator into the side of the house and power up crucial equipment maybe like uh, refrigerators uh, hot water if I wanted it internet computers so I could see what's going on outside out in the world and uh, that'll fulfill all my electrical needs for now I know some of you might uh, suggest to me like solar or something like that but I'm not seeing 
a positive uh, situation for that right now. Uh, the next thing is you saw us get into hydroponics and growing things and we we're very happy how everything's turned out. Even our little homemade greenhouse is amazing. <clears throat> and we we're thinking about expanding our greenhouse to another one. And with big discussions between me and Sherry, we've decided to prolong that because we want to put in a few more backup systems here to be more self-sufficient. So you'll probably see us in a few months put in that last system for the um, generators and we'll be really happy that we'll be prepared for emergencies. Now we know we can produce food. And what we've learned this year for our first year, this has only been our first year with this place, excuse me, um, that we need to modify a few things. Like the NFT, beautiful system, but in midsummer it's too hot. But we'll keep this running and we're gonna use this, utilize this in spring and fall. This part here, we're gonna change over to uh, not an NFT anymore, we're gonna change it to the uh, Dutch bucket system because we really do like beans and stuff like that, but the roots are too uh, big to handle in an NFT system. So we'll modify that a little bit. We also realize we really love the uh, um, Walla Walla onions. So we're gonna produce much more of those next year. And uh, so yeah, a lot of lessons learned and now we can refine it because we've had our first year learning how the seasons work here. Um, for the rest of this year, I think today I'm actually planting peas and I'm gonna see if I can get some uh, fall peas growing. And uh, I'm not sure, I might do that in the NFT, tell you the truth. We'll see. Uh, I think their roots are kind of aggressive too, but it's getting towards the end of the year, I can deal with that. The point is, of all this, is <coughs> being self-sufficient, if you're not getting the hint by now. If you haven't figured it out, or if it hasn't been something that's occurred to you that no one's here to help us when the chips are down, then uh, we won't be able to reach you. You're, you're, you're on your own. Uh, hopefully, if people are watching our shows and watching other homestead channels, you get the, you're starting to be enthusiastic enough to think about trying to be more self-sufficient or at least do some prepping. And that's cool. But I think it might get tougher than that. Now we don't know what the future brings, but I do know that our freedoms, our liberties, our freedom of speech, um, our lifestyles that we've had for several years is going away. And our freedom to speak our minds is going away and being infringed on. And uh, that's pretty sad. And it doesn't seem to be wanting to go back. Although some of us are trying our best to get it back. <clears throat> so some of the things that we want to do in the future to maybe motivate you if you're not motivated by now, then we're getting to a point now, you should have started all this yesterday. But if you're gonna start now, do it. I have a friend that's gonna visit us tomorrow. He's from California. And Jack, <laughs> I'm talking about you. He's in California. You guys all know cringe when you think about California. And if you think your uh, liberties and freedoms have been infringed on uh, where you're at, just try living in California. So what he's doing is taking a positive approach at an early stage of looking at property in Idaho and also this area. And tomorrow I get to meet him and his uh, partner. And uh, we, uh, we're gonna give him kind of a tour of what we're doing. We're not perfect. We got things that need to be better. And he'll get here and go, wow, Rob, you, know, you could probably do some of this a little better. <laughs> he 
<laughs> yeah. But the fact is I'm not sitting on my thumbs and complaining and, and worrying and being uh, living in fear. You don't want to live in fear. And you, there's a lot of things, I mean, don't live in fear. If this touches your heart at all, you might want to visit your faith a little bit. A lot would be better. And I'll leave it at that. Because everything is going on. You say, well, what's I don't understand why all this is going on. Well, if you have faith and read a particular book, it will tell you what's going on. All of this is not a surprise. All of this is documented. Everything in our history is documented. And, uh, if, and then the other thing is history it replays itself. So don't forget about history. Maybe go back and study history. Start with 1929 and the Depression. Take it from there. And tell me if there isn't similarities happening. Yeah, it'll be a little different, a little change in the different players and the whole works. But you'll see history is replaying itself. So what are we going to do? So thinking out loud, um, we were talking about a greenhouse. We're going to slide on that because we'd rather put the funds into more so being more self-sufficient for the household. And I really think, uh, another thing you don't know about me is I used to raise my own game birds. I used to raise my own turkeys. And uh, I'm thinking that we may be building another chicken facility here for meat birds. Now that'll be a lot different than the facility over here because meat birds are, you bring them in, you fatten them up and you butcher them. So it'd be two things I'd be building here. One is a great place for them to live and two, a butcher station outdoors that allows us to process our chickens and we'd probably have to buy another freezer. Now I've been kind of waiting for the world to dictate to me whether that's, I want to get into raising more meat and uh, I haven't quite gotten there yet and I could change my mind. But I'll either do meat birds, chickens, or raise a few turkeys. Uh, I just love to raise turkeys. <laughs> Nothing beats a fresh turkey. Anyway, super dumb bird by the way. And uh, once again, that's thinking out loud. That's brainstorming. Um, and, and it could come to pass, who knows. <clears throat> and. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, uh, we keep building on, you know, just do a little bit at a time. So the other point I'm making is you don't have to do all this at once. You don't have to do all this at once. You don't have to do the towers all at once. You don't have to do the greenhouse all at once. You just take steps at a time. Each one of these were a step. First was the chicken house. Second was the uh, greenhouse. And this was being developed kind of in, in between. Then we did the tower system. And, uh, and that was as far as we could get before the summer hit. Now that we're winding down, we say what worked well and what didn't. We could have learned a few lessons about our corn. We haven't harvested yet. They're not ready. But yeah, we planted too close together and we want more of it. And uh, so what did we enjoy? We enjoyed the peppers, we enjoyed the beans, uh, the tomatoes for sure, and uh, other things like Swiss chard, uh, although it's kind of a treat once in a while, not to grow so much of that, but uh, <clears throat> the strawberries we love, and we'll build on to the things we would liked, and we'll not do the things we dislike. You don't want to grow food that you don't enjoy eating. If you really love beans, <laughs> grow beans. If you like tomatoes, grow tomatoes. If you're not too sure about Swiss chard, don't grow it. We do like the peppers. We're gonna go a lot more into the roasting red peppers, the big ones. Uh, we only grew a few of those, but now we know, we love them, and we're gonna do much more of them. The other thing that's coming up is, this has been over a year now that we've had these chickens. 
and they'll do well till next year. But eventually these chickens are gonna have to retire. So we have ordered a um, chicken uh, tractor. And the chicken tractor will be for the retired hens. And what are we gonna use the chicken tractor for? This area. So the little chicken tractor, if you look a little closer to our lawn, it's kind of spotty. It's not the in the best health. It's got a, it's a, plus it, <laughs> we wanna see how magical chickens can transform this area into even a more beautiful landscape. So we'll actually run a chicken tractor all along this area. Um, and we've ordered one um, online. We're waiting for it to come in. And it won't be, really won't be used till uh, next spring. And eventually I'll have to order more laying hens because these guys will slow down. Now, actually we don't mind them slowing down a little bit because we get too many eggs now. So uh, once again, it's brainstorming. The question is, are you watching this show for entertainment? Or are you watching this show for motivation and ideas? And are you paying attention to the world around you and realizing a few things that you've watched? Uh, Americans being abandoned, people uh, uh, in trouble. You know, you can only avoid paying a mortgage or rent for so long. The government's got to stop. And then you'll realize you're on your own. So... What can you do today to put you in the mode of self-sufficiency and not depending on governments or organizations to bail you out? And I know that's a different answer for different people. Some people love to be on welfare and being taken care of, or maybe their health is down and stuff. You know, there's, everybody's got a different answer to that question. How much work are you willing to do? Is this easy? No, there's days I come out here going, oh Lord. But then there's other days I'm going, I am so glad I was motivated to do this stuff. So it's not an easy task. But I can tell you 100 years ago, 200 years ago, it was certainly not an easy task to do what our pioneers did. We're pretty wimpy compared to them. So, what is your motivation? Why are you watching our channel? Is there things that we could tell you that would help you move forward? Do you have questions about our property or how we're doing this or how we get in started in hydroponics? Um, if you're in an area that doesn't have a lot of water, hydroponics is a wonderful way to go. But there's nothing wrong with conventional gardening either. If you got good rich soil, able to get water to it, you're good to go. So really, this is a video to say, are you awake? Are you paying attention? Are you just saying, Rob, you're, you're, you're over dramatizing what's going on? I could be, maybe I am, but to do all this, does it hurt anything? No, does it help our family? Yes. Has it helped with our health? Yes, staying active, eating better. All kind, There's we have unlimited food it seems like. The only thing I'd like to maybe be stronger on is having more poultry. I can't raise chicken, uh, can't raise pigs or cows here but that's okay, I'm surrounded by co-op um, organizations where I can get all the meat and pork I want. And uh, so yeah, I'm good there. But uh, chickens, my gosh, you can't go wrong with a meat bird. You can raise a, uh, each bird once they're um, 
cleaned out, they're, you're looking at four, five, six pounds per bird. And, you know, to do 50 meat birds, which only take about eight weeks, nine weeks, to get the full size and butcher, that's pretty affordable. And that's a lot of protein to put into your freezer. And turkeys too, um, they're, they um, take a little while to fatten up, but they're delicious. And yes, I've done that before. I have no problem with that. Uh, they won't be pets. They will be uh, treated well, uh, have a great facili uh, facility, spoiled like crazy, but they will be butchered. And if you're like, oh, that's terrible, Rob. Uh, I'm sorry, but all that stuff that comes in the, uh, at, at your grocery store uh, starts <laughs> at a farm, then it gets butchered, then it gets processed and ends up, you don't see that. And you may realize it's gonna get harder and harder to get that stuff at the grocery store. You're gonna have to face the reality that that's where our food comes from. If you wanna be just vegan, great. <laughs> I've done that for a while. And uh, grow your stuff. <clears throat> so anyway, guys, for those that are awake, if there's anything we could do to help you, go forward, just like Jack and his wife, where they're looking at a, a facility, they're taking a, a long trip here, by a road trip up here and looking around and uh, it's never easy, it could be a little scary, it could be quite the adventure, but they're thinking about being self-sufficient. And knowing him, he's pretty analytical, he'll do it a lot better than I do. But uh, um, they get it. The world is telling them they gotta get going and they're running out of time. And uh, if we're not, what harm has it caused? It hasn't caused any. <clears throat> but you could end up like this and nothing happens and you're just going to have a great variety of food and a great place to live and you're out of the jungle a little bit the city jungle of the woke folks that they're not going to change they're not going to do this they're caught up in the wokeness of this new generation and maybe some will come around maybe it'll take some hardship for them. some of them will come around but if we haven't reached them by now it's time to let them go and focus on our own communities and our own uh, uh, patriotism and self-sufficiency um, it's time to put your energy into yourself and not others if there's others that want help, call out for help, need assistance, we're there for them. But uh, it's time now to make your changes, to be more self-sufficient. And uh, I hope you guys are the best. I hope we're always a good motivation for that. You can do it at any age. And uh, also keep in mind what your age is and what you can and can't do <clears throat> there's a lot you can do at any age so guys i hope that wasn't a bummer for you <laughs> but uh we're here for you and i want to thank you for watching our channel please take the time to like subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wide world sharing is caring and getting our video out there really helps us we'd like to grow more and we do have a lot of new subscribers every day, and I am grateful. So guys, have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye now. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.